we're still having a, a few problems um, with building the AMAX. Um, as in with the length of the ball screws in relation to the overall length of the Y axes actually. But this would apply to any of the axes. If you have received um, a different measurement uh, ball screw to what you've ordered, which can sometimes happen, um, because the Chinese really distinguish between inches and millimeters. So you may order a meter and they may send you something that's a yard. You know, that has happened. It's happened to me. But, you know, there, there is a fairly easy fix. And I'll explain to you uh, exactly how to do it. Um, so the y-axis. Now there's one particular gentleman that uh, sent me a couple of photographs through and uh, I was trying to, in one of the last videos, I was trying to answer, you know, a dozen people's uh, problems. Uh, but uh, this particular gentleman has a, an excess problem in length of ball screw. Okay, now in this guy's um, case, the ball screw looks as though it's about 50 millimeters too short, which is a lot. Um, so without losing too much travel in the Y, this is the easy fix for you. Now, on the one that I have built and I designed it, I have the bearing housing on the outside. Okay, now bearing in mind that, <laughs> oh, that was a funny pun. Uh, okay, bearing in mind that, um, the gentleman's y-axis is two inches or 50 millimeter too short. Okay, so what you need to do in this case is mount this bearing on the inside here. Okay, so that takes care of um, about a good inch. All right. But you're still short. You're still going to be too short at the other end. Now, ideally, what you need is the end of the, uh, the ball screw, the very end where the coupling joins onto, needs to be fairly flush with this, okay? So without the coupling on there, uh, the end of the ball screw, okay, as in the very end of the shaft, uh, should be approximately flush with the outer side of this, okay? But in this gentleman's case, even if he mounts the bearing, on the inside down the other end he is still going to be about an inch too short so the only fix for that is to it doesn't matter which end whether it's this end or this end but what you're gonna have to do and I'll, get, I'll just get a tool a minute to uh, indicate what we need to do here so what you need to do is the exact measurement of how much you're short at the other end to bring the y-axis uh, ball screw end of the shaft out flush with the, the other end where the motor goes on. Measure that and you're going to have to shorten the y-axis to compensate for it. Now 
cutting the aluminium is fairly easy and I'll show you a tool that you can use to do that which is not expensive um, but now the metal on this these are hardened steel you won't be able to cut this with a hacksaw so get yourself now I, I you know I've tried to design this 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 whole system using sort of handyman tools okay you don't need a lathe and anything like that okay but there are some tools that you you it would be advisable to to have and this is one of them just a small angle grinder and I use what's commonly known as a metal slitting saw or cutting saw very thin one they're only a millimeter wide you're gonna to have to use one of those to cut through that metal now if you're not uh, should we say if you don't feel confident of cutting through this um, it's not a good idea to cut through the aluminium with a slitting saw uh, because it just gums it all up. Uh, when you dismantle this, this is screwed through using these cap screws into the, into the metal. Remove this off the aluminium. Cut them separately. Okay, so using a slitting saw you can cut this off exactly the length that you require. Okay and then cutting this off I'll show you the tool to use for that and I'll take you down the other end of my workshop and there's mess everywhere now this is what I use now this is a pretty standard saw it's a Ryobi actually but it's not a standard blade this is a tungsten tipped fine blade now you can use this to cut aluminium and this is what I use it doesn't necessarily have to be as large as that one but you know sort of uh, a good eight I think that was a 10 inch something like that but uh, you know, you could do it with a probably a six or a seven inch. Okay, but that's what needs to happen to get that down to the correct uh, measurement. You know, there's no sort of um, uh, quick fix for that. You know, it does involve a bit of cutting, and uh, you know, the worst thing to cut is that hardened steel rod. Now then, um, you're not probably going to be able to cut it exactly square. <coughs> Excuse me. So you're not going to be able to cut it exactly square. That's fine. That's okay. So what you do, and I'll show you what I have done with mine. Because when they come from China, they're not cut terribly square. Okay, if you notice here, there is a shim, uh, because, and you can see the bit of a gap there, okay, and it's pretty flush here. So you, it will be necessary to get this exactly 90 degrees, it will be necessary to shim. I've just used a little bit of shim brass in there, in actual fact I've put two pieces in there I think. Uh, which is about, I think it was something like, uh, oh, 12 thou or something like that. My, yeah, about 12 thou of an inch there. Um, of course, I, I mix inches and millimetres up as well. But, you know, so really all you're after is getting this the right length and also getting this 90 degrees. Okay, so that's the easiest fix for that problem. So that sorts that particular problem out. 
Uh, and I, I, I've been asked many times, actually, because I do know of this uh, problem with the, uh, the certainly the Chinese, um, with getting, I suppose, confused with uh, metric and uh, imperial measurements. When you order a meter and you get something like 36 inches, there is a difference. Uh, and I'll tell you one of the main reasons why. Uh, and that, that I was quite shocked, actually, because some of you may know that uh, I actually lived in China over a period of six years. It would have totaled up a year and a half uh, that I totally lived there, you know. Um, and something I learnt that I never knew before, that... Um, a Chinese inch is about an inch and a quarter in imperial. So when you see a, a Chinese, a genuine Chinese person using a, a ruler, a wooden ruler, it's, <laughs> it's, it's eight inches long, <laughs> or thereabouts. Anyway, so, yeah, it's about eight inches long. Uh, as in their eight inches making you know a foot for for us uh, at least that's what I could see it could it was uh, I mean I didn't sort of uh, put one of our rulers next to it but I did understand that oh their measurement is totally different to you know Western sort of measurement and it's not until you sort of get out in the sticks, I suppose, in China, that you find that out. Anyway, um, I'll put this up on my main channel because, uh, you know, a lot of people have uh, wrote in to me, you know, in the comments section and sent emails, and um, I'm, I'm really uh, addressing a couple of uh, patrons here, but I think it's worthy uh, that uh, you know the rest of my viewers uh, do know that be sure that you know that, that they understand when you order exactly what measurement you want because uh, you can get tripped up with that uh, but that is the fix um, for doing that right, it's a little bit more messing around and machining but um, you know, it's not the end of the world. You can you can manage okay. All right then. So um, I don't know whether I'm going to get another video up for this weekend because I am actually rushing this uh, through to film this. This is fairly early in the morning on Thursday um, because we're expecting a big storm through uh, and a lot of rain. So. Uh, I'll see what I can do for this weekend. So uh, for me, it's bye for now.